Welcome back to Web Certain TV. I'm Gemma Houghton, and today I'm pleased to be joined by Bill Hunt, global SEO expert, and we're going to be discussing various things to do with international SEO. So, hi, Bill. Thanks for being here. Great. Thanks for having me. Always good to talk to you about these topics. Um, and today we're going to start with one of every international SEO's favorite topics and geotargeting and specifically hreflang. Mm -hmm. We know that it's a topic we've talked about a lot and has been talked about right. a lot, um, but recently there's been more discussions around it and people coming up with potentially workarounds for how right. to figure out how best to use it or how to get it on the site. What right. are your kind of feelings on that? What do you think is going on with it right now? Yeah, I think like anything with search, the workarounds evolve naturally. Um, people are starting to you know, show, well, I did it this way and it still worked. Um, I think the biggest challenge, and in talking to the folks at Google over this, is that so many people are doing it incorrectly, um, that Google, that many of these workarounds actually are the result of Google having to think what they actually meant to do or to uh, accommodate this. Because the last thing they want to do is devastate, you know, mm. someone's business. Um, by misinterpreting these signals. Yeah. So, you know, there's some people saying, you know, if you do one of these, um, Google understands the next eight languages, combinations, and yeah, of course they do, because they already have other signals and they had other signals, yeah. I think. So, for me, I'm a little, you know, maybe old school or rigid that I think we should do things the right way. Um, why did you get the, the workaround work is because you you know, you failed and, and Google yeah. didn't want to, uh, to punish your business. So it's, I think it's better to do it right rather than hoping uh, that Google's going to continue some sort of workaround. And this has been the challenge with it from, you know, the, from when it first launched right. is that people do get it wrong and right. a lot. Why is that? What is it that makes it so challenging for people to get right? There's, there's three things that they get wrong and SEMrush did a really good study um, on this and, and you know about 78% of HREF based on their research found that they're done incorrectly. Number one thing, people just don't understand language tags. Mm -hmm. um, so the UK is a big one. Mm -hmm. Everybody calls it UK for United Kingdom. Uh, unfortunately they didn't tell the ISO people uh, who think of the UK as a bigger thing, not just you know England. Mm -hmm. um, so you use GB. But the number one mistake we often see is that they actually use UK yeah. uh, instead of GB. UK is the Ukraine. Mm. Um, another big one we see is like with Japan. Uh, people, JP, JP, um, when language is JA. We see this in CMS systems themselves. Mm. Um, and, and that's the, the creates the second problem is mapping the pages. And that's where inherently the problems come from, whether you're using WordPress, uh, plugins that are trying to map them, mm -hmm. uh, or you've got some sophisticated solution um, to do that. That's where people make mistakes and, and little nuances break. So we've, we've talked, and in, in a big topic at, at the International Search Summit is always do I use top level domains or do I use subdirectories or subdomains? Some people use all of the above, and because they have all these nuances, they don't necessarily align well. And that yeah. creates the second biggest problem is you haven't mapped A to B and B to A uh, and then A to C. Uh, yeah. And that creates that, that big problem where Google really can't figure out what are the alternates. Um, and those are really the big ones. And I think, again, people try to shoehorn this into their existing infrastructure. Um, the third problem is, is the web itself. You know, Search people, we, we pontificate on end about, um, you know, crawl budgets and, and how much stuff we can get indexed, but we never really look at what's really indexed. And a lot of times if we use uh, hreflang in the page, um, those pages may not be getting indexed, so Google can't find the corresponding yeah. tag, which means you get an error. Mm -hmm. And they blame it on href as opposed to blaming it on the fact that a big section of your website in a particular country uh, wasn't indexed. Yeah, so you need to look beyond just, it's, you can't just focus on that as an isolation. It's like everything is exactly. part of the bigger picture. And, um, and I think it, it brings an, another question that I ask recently is who owns this? Hmm. Is it because it's something from Google people automatically assign it to the SEO people? 
Is it tech, it's technically technical, yes, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, so is it the dev team that does it? It's language, so is it the localization mm -hmm. does it? Is it the local SEO, whether you're in Spain or UK, are you responsible for it? Uh, or is it the global person who's responsible for it? So I think since there's no distinct owner, um, it gets passed around like a hot potato rather than being a collaborative effort between all these people to make sure it's correct. And probably only really the SEOs really understand what it is in many cases or know that it ex exists even if exactly. they don't fully understand it. So therefore the other teams aren't even aware of that and they're doing things that could, could exactly. damage it without even knowing. Totally. You know, we've seen people make changes uh, to their web structure without updating um, their href language. We've seen people move from uh, HTTP to HTTPS and not updated. Mm. Um, the other big one are canonical problems. Yeah. People will reference a global site on every page as opposed to referencing the local site. Um, so that gets back to your original question of just fundamental confusion. Uh, and Google, you know, on their part, is working on trying to clarify a lot more of this, but you essentially have one blog post the details, as John Mueller recently referred to, is the single most technical and complex item plaguing SEO today. Yeah. Uh, so that's why we end up with all these problems. And that does seem to be, it does, it, it constantly is up there with people saying that, you know, it's still something people don't get right after right. many years. Is it, is it because the, the way it's being done is actually not very, you know, is it, it, it could there be a better way to do this? Or is it just that the, the, the task of separating all these different language and country pages and making those visible is just always going to be complex and you just yeah. have to deal with it? I mean, they, a variety of people asked me recently, is there a better solution? And right now, I don't know that there's necessarily a better solution other than the engines themselves doing a better job of detection. Um, it's also on the site owner too, which is an inherent problem, because most people will take their UK site, uh, and because it's pretty close, will clone it for Australia and South Africa, and call it a day, maybe India mm -hmm. as well. So now you have exactly the same site, cloned, and all it is is on a different folder, mm -hmm. uh, or maybe it's on a, a top level domain. Um, maybe a token address, or if it's an e-commerce site, there's a currency um, symbol that's different. Um, so it's pretty hard for the engines to really have to figure this out across all these pieces. Um, so yeah, I think it's really the best way right now. I'm very partial to XML sitemaps. Um, you know, that's what our tool focuses on, and especially with complex scenarios. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's independent of the page being indexed. Uh, so it, we can feed this in just like XML sitemaps. Um, and, and it reduces the error because in building these, you're often not searching and replacing, which is what a lot of people do with Excel, mm -hmm. or they use these little insertion tools using the language code in the page. And as we've heard, like 96% of the language codes are actually incorrect. Uh, there's people with, you know, with a Mexico page, but it's got Brazilian Portuguese as the language set in the HTML. I, I don't know that it's going to necessarily get easier. Um, it's going to take a variety of people to come together and say, let's do this to our websites to make it easier. Let's let Google be uh, a little smarter. Hmm. Um, and then let's, let's, as the middleware people, the SEOs building and executing this, Let's put a little more rigor behind how to do it. And I think, you know, uh, you know articles that uh, come out of the International Search Summit, um, you know, the, the different broadcasts you have on web certain TV about this is another way we can start to educate people of some of the right ways to do it. And that's the thing is that it's, it is complex and there's different approaches and there's different right. ways people have tried. So it is very much about listening to Right. experience of people who've done it and actually taking that away and applying it and right. not just kind of hoping you can press a magic button and it Yeah, works. I mean, if you've got a simple site, it's in five languages and your structure, and you know, we have on our website when we talk about our tool set, we just simply say, you know, if you, for every piece of complexity, it gets infinitely harder mm. to do it. And so, but if you've got a standard cookie cutter, 
you know, five market website with the same URL structure without localized URLs, href can be done any of these methods within a couple of hours easily and it's brilliant. Uh, but for every complication mm -hmm. you add, just like everything else we do, every complexity we add, uh, it increases the challenges. And this is a debate that you know goes beyond HREF lang and is generally around mm -hmm. you know geo targeting, and it's something that we had at the international search at this time quite a discussion about the use of GT TLDs or CCTLDs right. for global domains and whether uh, global websites and whether it's better to consolidate in one or the other. What are your feelings on that? You know, from where you sit and from your experience. Right. I, from my experience, going back you know, over 20 years when many people were starting to do things, I had one of the first true multilingual websites myself. And um, you know, when you start, especially sites that have been around a while, most of them have been using uh, CCTLDs. Um, for most brands that do other types of advertising, you're gonna have that domain anyways. Um, for TV or print, um, so it's there. Is there a difference? Today, there's really not a marginal difference. You know, you can host a .co.uk in the United States, mm -hmm. and sometimes it's being treated as a U.S. site yeah. because of where it's hosted, the links to it, and all the signals. Mm -hmm. So it's not the true guarantee it used to be um, that, it, that that's the absolute, that it is U.K. What about the U.K. company or the Spanish company uh, that has a .es as their mothership, but then has these other versions uh, for Latin America or for the US. Um, the net for me is if what you have works, uh, and I tend to want to err on the side of, of DevOps and IT operations, because you know when I was at IBM, we came up with a number, it's about $60,000 of overhead uh, per market. Now, you know, mom and pop WordPress website uh, yeah. cloned in 10 languages isn't gonna occur 60 grand of overhead. But when you have the rigor that these do mm -hmm. from a security standpoint, from a, a CDN standpoint, um, it can get quite expensive, uh, which is the, probably the main reason people have been going to subdirectories. Um, search gets a tremendous benefit as we've seen because yeah. all the links uh, is aggregated around. Google said that domain authority is not as big as what it was. Um, it's a page by page, so it sort yeah. of throws that out the window. Uh, but we have seen, and there's plenty of studies, and one was presented um, you know, at the conference that, that showed that moving it from a top level domains to subdirectories allowed all this link value to sort of aggregate yeah. Uh, and be redistributed. I, again, the end is, if it's working for you, no matter what solution you have, um, go with it. Try to be consistent. Uh, either go all top-level domains or go all uh, directories. I'd stay mm -hmm. away from subdomains. Yep. Um, and then let it work for you. Give it time to work, and uh, if it does, don't fix it. Um, yeah. And if it doesn't, then choose one. And if you're starting out, that was an interesting point. If I'm starting out today, which should mm -hmm. I go with? Um, if you think you're going to be the next eBay or Amazon, you better buy those domains because somebody else will as yeah. you start to become popular. Um, so you can start executing that today. Um, worst case, use global, like a .com, uh, build everything off of that stack and, and just stick to it. And then you, know, you talk a lot about the missed opportunities in, in search, and a lot of that comes down to the geotargeting, you know, poor href lang and, and really missing out on having pages indexed and having them visible mm -hmm. in the right market. What do you think are the opportunities for the businesses that do it really well? How much advantage do they have over the competition? I think it's significant. I mean, we, we've asked our clients, how much have you benefited in sales from implementing href language correctly? And, and that tallied up to almost $100 million in incremental revenue. Mm -hmm. um, that's a lot of money. We've had, we had one where it generated $8 million in 33 days. And, and it's this, this simple. Yeah. People in Australia were searching. Um, what would come up was their global page. So all their SEO reports said they're doing brilliantly mm -hmm. in Australia. But what's coming up is a global page where you could only learn about a product. 
versus buying the product, which was on the Australian version, which was deemed as redundant uh, because the, the global one. Simply fixing that meant they could actually sell. So $8 million in 33 days is a pretty big competitive advantage. Yeah. Now, if you're competing against an Australian-based company, they've got an advantage because all their signals mm -hmm. are strictly Australian. Um, so, you know, it, it can be huge. It, just imagine that. If you've ever been on holiday somewhere and you've tried to Google something and now you see it in Spanish mm -hmm. and you don't speak Spanish, uh, it's very frustrating. So think about the local user that is seeing something in English or German um, and it's not the right version. So it can be, and that's you know what we recommend people to look at is when you get an SEO report and it just simply says you have this many ranking number one and this many on page one, mm -hmm. ask the question how many of the local market? And just do a pivot table on, on the results. Tell them to give you the actual page it's ranking and see what percentage of your pages are ranking from a country other. I, I just did a presentation this morning that showed four major queries for this company, their name plus products. Um, in two cases, it was either a page from Chile or a page from Colombia that was ranking number one here in Spain. Yeah. So is that a problem because it's, well, it's a different currency, obviously. Yeah. It's probably slightly more expensive to send that product from Spain than it is to get it from your local market. So I think that's exactly it. I think the big competitive advantage, the more of these you get correct, the more opportunity you have to connect with local people. Yeah. And hopefully your competitors are just letting it ride and whatever is there is there. Uh, and, and you can see this almost immediately by the amount of traffic that comes in and the amount of incremental revenue that's generated uh, from those pages. Yeah, so definitely worth putting some effort and attention into it. It totally is. I mean, just at least understand your current state. How much of a problem is it? Is it a problem today? If it's not, if you're no complaints from the market team, no complaints from customers that they're seeing the UK page in India uh, or whatever market, then okay, you're probably in, in decent shape. But um, if the signals show it's the wrong page in the wrong place, then you know, it's definitely a, a pretty significant business problem. Great. Well, thanks very much as always. Great tips and advice, Bill. Thanks. Great. Thanks. Enjoyed it. Thanks.